You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, on the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Terra Nova. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest Terra Nova news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Terra Nova. Welcome, welcome, guys. How are you guys this week? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Pumped. There you go. I am Phil Svitek, and I am joined this week by Kristen Carney. You got it. And Kendra. Kendra. <laughs> you have Wait to for learn. it. Wait for it. Cabasala. Cabasal. Cabasal. Cabasa sausage. I'm going to have to I'll have just a session on my name. We should. We should. It's getting embarrassing now. I was, ca I was carrying oh, I'm that. sorry. I'm sorry. But uh, missing this week is Gabrielle Loren. Um, she will rejoin us, I guess, in two weeks since, uh, as we kind of found out towards the end uh, with the previews, that, you know, they said in two weeks. So, yeah. We won't have another episode until then. But what an amazing episode this was, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. getting and, some action. And it's starting to, uh, you're starting to like it yourself, right? I know you, Kristen, wasn't the biggest fan initially, but you're starting to like it. It's still growing on me. It's, it's But at growing. least it's grown. It's yeah, grown. Yeah, yeah. Kendra? I'm enjoying it. It's it's picking up, you know, tempo, and I think uh, I think we're getting into the, the nitty-gritty now. I like it. I like it. Well, um, to start things off, um, we usually save, like, the best part last, but I can't help but start off discussing what is in this box and how significant this is. I hope it's something really significant. Because what if we get to the point and it's just like, oh, it's a lollipop? <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope it, it's something cool. I My mean, imagination can't go that far. But, okay, so, you know, first episode, it was like the answers are all in these cave paintings or whatever it was. Um, so now is this like a less of a significant thing? I mean, what, what I like is that, you know, this is only the second thing, so it's not like they're throwing each week like, oh, this is important, this is important. Mm -hmm. So... I, I believe it could be very, very important. Yeah, I think it it may, maybe it's even a map linked to those drawings. Um, the little girl, Leah, mentioned, I like maps. You know, she kept mm -hmm. n n naming what she liked. So maybe it's a map, maybe it's some sort of compass. I don't know, it could be anything. They did say it felt hollow, so maybe it is a map because maps are light. What if it was this? What if it was, a, you know, um, there's no way to go back to 2149? Right, right. Thoughts on that, uh, Kendra? It's instructions on how to go back? Think? No, like well, maybe it's some sort of portal. I don't know. Maybe it's like, uh, or the equivalent of like uh, in Back to the Future, the flux capacitor to right. make that possible. I don't know. I don't well, well, Mira was saying how her kid is in 2149, so maybe she, you could see how pained she was by not being able to see her daughter. So maybe mm -hmm. that's what she was looking for so she could go back to 2149 because she has, a, or, you know, left her daughter when she was four. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? The thought, uh, Kendra, do you have anything to add to that? Um, Sorry. it could be, yeah, sort of kind of how, um, like, uh, Princess Leia became a hologram. Maybe they could see at least into the... Mm -hmm. Well, and, uh, you know, going back, to, uh, here's my thought. Um, you know, in the first episode, you guys were, uh, it was kind of a pet peeve of ours. We didn't get explained how, um, it's possible for them to go back in time, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, what if this kind of explained it and, you know, did open up that possibility to go, you know, both ways? Yeah, yeah. I think they, I think they all know how you get through it. I don't think they gave... But we don't as the, as the viewers, right? Right, but why would they keep it in a box? So may, I would be more apt to think that it's to go back to 2149 rather than just in general of space travel because they, they know, we just don't know. Mm -hmm. But they clearly know because they did it and they got there. What if someone doesn't know? Maybe it's, you know what I mean? It's kind of one of those things. Uh, uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with um, Philip Pullman and his books, The Subtle Knife or uh, The Golden Compass um, or The Amber Spyglass. But basically it, it was, you know, there were these portals to these worlds. And for the longest time, you know, some people 
study them, but most of the people that kind of used them didn't really know what they were about. And so it, it was, you know, um, was it a matter of just they found this portal and they're like, oh, where does this go? Oh, it takes me back to the past. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. think at least that's where I'm pushing it towards there because that's what I'd like to see. I mean, uh, but don't let me dictate my thoughts on you. I mean, is there for you, Kendra, what would you like to see this box be, do, et cetera? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I want it to give us some answers. It, you know, maybe it'll pull a lot of our questions together and kind of give us uh, a glimpse into what's what what the real conflict is between everybody. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know, in what form that'll take, but I, I just hope it gives some more answers. I think, for you. I think it will humanize. Whatever is in there, I think will humanize the Sixers because I think we're starting to see that they have some emotion and feeling and they're really maybe not that bad. So I think whatever is in there may, might be sentimental. Yeah. Might actually mm -hmm. be like, you know, who knows? It could be something as insignificant as like a locket with a picture of someone's mother in it or something, but it still has deep, deep rooted meaning. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think uh, in some ways, you know, regardless of what it is for me, I think if it ties in nicely with the cave paintings, then, you know, they're doing their job. Yeah. We have, well, we haven't heard anything about the cave paintings since we the haven't. first episode, right? You know, but yeah. uh, we obviously have a lot of episodes to go. Do you go. think that they'll follow up on that? I think they have to. They can't. They can't have a scene that's based uh, to to some degree a little bit cliched of like the cave paintings. They're the they're the key for everything, right? And then not right. follow up on right. that. That's right. just right. You know, mm -hmm. it just the they've left gaps. They've left so they've opened so many doors and left so many gaps. So like every episode, it's like a new something, and and they've resolved some things, but they haven't resolved other things. So it's like they open up, it's like they open up a new can and leave it there, open up a new can and leave it there with like the, you know, but the it's, metal part it, It's kind of slow. It, you, you, what <laughs> I like is, um, like yeah. <laughs> you know, you guys brought up a good point. Um, we're starting to humanize the Sixers, and in many ways, I think that is strategic um, because, you know, at first it's like, you know, our kind of complaint was that it's so black and white, you know, you have the good guys and the bad guys. Now, with this, it's like, um, you know, I think that maybe could have been de by design. Yeah, because the Sixers got into my heart a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm all right. I, I'm so there you go. We're creating that complexity that yeah. you wanted. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not getting it with the kids. I'm not getting it with the kids. Well, all right. Uh, l we'll come back to, I mean, there's obviously a bigger thing to talk about with this box, and that's the spy and Taylor and all that. But um, let's talk about the family real quick. Um, you know, we unlike the rest of the episodes, we get a little bit less of the family. We see Maddie on her internship being courted, and Josh is away from... We don't see Sky this whole episode. We didn't see Sky, right. and I was pleasantly surprised. Why is that? Because that, I don't know, that um, that teenage angst just, yeah. It's just still that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad they didn't spend time. You know, now we're kind of, for me, as I said, I, I'm, I like how we're getting more into the plot. Right, and, like Sixers, yeah. action. Yeah. Sky, Sky can take a resting cloud up for a little bit and she'll come back. She'll be blue next episode. Mm -hmm. The sun will come out tomorrow. And it, it just may have been too much with uh, the other couple, you know. Right, yeah. They did do some a lot of couple, or, you know, with um, with Maddie. Maddie yeah. mm -hmm. So they probably left the attention to her for this episode. Let us focus on that more. Yeah, I mean, uh, we know you, Kristen, don't necessarily like Josh because of his teenage things. What about you, Kendra? I mean, um, how's Josh for you in this episode? Are you still liking him a little bit more even though we didn't see him he was kind of yeah on the back burner this time um i am kind of curious about that storyline as well um because you know i'm still curious about sky and what her motive is in trying to find his ex-girlfriend or because you know. well um he, i i well i guess let's kind of talk about it a little bit <laughs> um you, you know because she to. she's the one who um you know interest introduced us to the bartender and he's right we think he's the spy. I mean, he has to be. Well, he's obviously yeah, he's in communication. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he's um, kind of kind of shady. Yes, I I just don't want to say that he's the spy because then uh, if I'm wrong, then everyone's gonna like, oh, Phil was wrong. <laughs> um, but I think it's pretty safe to say he's the spy. At least one of the spies, correct? Yeah. 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 Um, and so I think. We, I mean, you can say it because we saw him communicating with the Sixers. Yes, but again, it's you're, just you're almost right. so Gullet obvious in. that I just <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. like. Yeah. If, if there's a not, backlash, right, I don't want to be right. <laughs> part of that. <laughs> yes. Um. But, you know, that that's why I don't we uh, we didn't see her as much. I Maybe is because, you know, I think she has some sort of tie in. And you know what? I think with this box now, it's another element. You know, she introduced us to the um, to the to the paintings. And now um, 
I think she has a hand in this. Yeah. Am I reading too much into it? Uh, no, I think she definitely has a hand because I think she has something to do with the Sixers. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I think she definitely has stuff going on. I think she has her hand in a lot of different kettles or something, whatever that phrase is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, she introduced us to um, the bartender, like you said, who who cl clearly has connections about bringing people in. Yeah. Also has something to do with the Sixers. Um, she knows about the drawings. She's got this weird like thing that she's going to do favors for Josh. Just because she's kind, she's just she's a very multifaceted person going, you know, right now, and and I think she definitely has um, mm -hmm. a lot to. Are those favors going to be through the Sixers? That's the thing. I don't know because he the the bartender. Um, well, we're, back, we're backtracking to last week's episode, but <laughs> yeah. the bartender spoke with the Sixers and he said, "I got this. I got mm -hmm. this kid. I or this girl. I got to get over here." Yeah, and that was because Sky recommended Josh to go to the bartender who then went to the Sixers. Yeah. So. I think. She's she's a player, you know? She is. She knows how to play the game. And even sh though she wasn't in this episode, I think uh, she's going to have a big hand to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, let's talk about Maddie and her internship and her kind of courting. I like how, you know what, uh, it is kind of old-fashioned, and, and what better year to start courting people than uh, 85 million years ago? Yeah. <laughs> If there were humans 85 million years ago, I don't think they were really courting it. I think they were just going for it. I think my yeah. complaint is you guys are so not romantic. As we're watching the I think Kendra like, could be romantic. No, I, yeah, I Kendra could no, be. No, I was saying who does that anymore in a way, you know, I was I was applauding what he was doing. Mm -hmm. the I was thing. booing it. <laughs> boo! Boo! No, I think oh, come it's on. It's so <laughs> rare to see, you know. And especially, like, imagine if you're in 2149. Who, who gets courted then? And right. so, you know right. what I mean? They you just know. get sprayed with Gatorade all the time. <laughs> 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 so he's a classy guy, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's sweet. But I just, I find, you know, I find it a little hokey. If they could just ease into it with a little more grace. A little hokey. I mean, to some degree it is. But at the same time, um, I think it's... Not saying by design. I mean, obviously it is by design, but um, you know, I like the time that he has to impress Jim, the father, to be able to do this. I like that mm -hmm. Jim was like a hard ass when mm -hmm. he went up to Jim to talk to him about co courting his daughter. Yeah, that and was Jim was funny. just like, "Don't you know, like, carry a grudge and a gun." Yeah, and like him and I have so much in common. <laughs> <laughs> the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Except I carry two guns. It's the only mm -hmm. difference. There you go. <laughs> um, the air gun. And uh, so this is internship. I mean, how, uh, she's she's getting I, out of it what most kids get out of an internship. Nothing. No, she well, no. It was funny. I, it just, was funny. You I like tell it. it wasn't her thing. Yeah. I mean, I think you know we talk about it every every week. There's kind of a comedic element. Was this yeah. the the comedic element to yeah. the episode? Yeah, yeah that definitely. Was, yeah. That was a big or, patch or of that. herpes or something on that guy's back. I love how he's the he's the he's the lab rat for all of this. Yeah. Like, oh, check this out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we're talking about yeah. me, okay? Yeah. Like, yeah. get rid of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> if I were him as an actor, I'd be like, like, excuse me, I want to have some sort of reaction <laughs> here, you know, because he mm -hmm. had to sit there and take it. Yeah, yeah. That. It's very true. Um, well, before we talk about our uh, spy and things like that, you know, sure, Richard Wentworth, who does our bumpers and and intros and things like that. He's created some new fun stuff for us, so uh, I just right. want to play a fun, uh, just cue the bandwidth one. That one's a lot of fun. I like that one. You guys will enjoy this. We'll get there. It's new. We're trying. It's a song? No, no, no. You'll, oh. you'll see is what it is. Is it the South Park thing? No, no, no. The but. biggest new media platform on the web just got bigger. More bandwidth. Smoother streaming. Fast download. And get technical with me. After Buzz TV is making the jump to hyperspace. Join the fun at your number one source for after show entertainment. Look at the size of that thing. After Buzz TV. There you go, guys. What do you think? That was good. Thank you. I like it. Sounds so legit. I love it. Hey, kids. Buzzy the After Buzz B says, get back on subject. So there you have it. How can we get back on subject? We have such wonderful music or intros to talk about well it's uh, the, sir good. richard wentworth is amazing jess get us back on track with the warning one time i'm totally off Our subject systems detect that a host has wandered off the subject please <laughs> oh, return nice. at once yes. it's gonna be every two seconds so there's your uh there's your fun <laughs> bits all right let's talk about the uh 
the crux of the whole episode, which is the spy, the little girl, and uh, obviously what happened with Taylor. Um, you know, could there? Let me ask you this: um, Could there be more than one spy? Um, yeah, I yeah, yeah, think yeah. So, yeah. Well, because we've got our eye on the bartender and on Malcolm. I thought it was very, very, very bizarre that Commander Taylor put Malcolm in charge of the box. I feel like they're in cahoots or something think, yeah. because Malcolm is definitely not very trustworthy. In gen- like that's just the vibe that you get from watching him. And then Commander Taylor, without question, went to him, gave him the box, and then he quickly they cut to a shot of him like putting it in his own like little like drawer, chest of drawers type thing, yeah. and he like locked it up. So I think that there's definitely something sneaky going on there. Yeah, for sure. I was I was gonna go as far as to say that Taylor is he, he's one of the shady. Yeah. <laughs> characters. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm Taylor, waiting for the twist on Taylor because I don't Ta- think he's a good guy. Well, Taylor's yeah. definitely a shady character. I mean, he's definitely got shades of gray. But um, why Malcolm? Yeah, I. Yeah. Right. Well, because Malcolm to me is the kind of character that will kind of get dirty or be sneaky. And I think mm-hmm. that's what Commander Taylor wants. On the surface, he communicates with Jim because Jim is an honest, good guy. But I think underneath it, he's really buddy buddy with Malcolm. Because and, and so um, the the scene where he's they're interrogating the one guy and Malcolm comes yeah. to the rescue is that a rouse much like uh, what the whole rouse was with the girl and the Sixers coming yeah. to yeah. rescue her? Yeah, I well, think Commander Taylor was communicating with him, like, "Oh, I'm gonna kind of blame you, but we're really buddies, yeah. and like we're gonna, you know, that's, that's slap high five later." That's smart. See, yeah. I didn't pick up that, on that. Yeah, that's what that's I wondered I because with Mira and the Sixers, I I felt like they backed down too easily. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that was kind of, I think they were playing roles, yeah. including the roles. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Interesting. And uh, in speaking, like, the most unsafe place to hide this box, right? Right, with Malcolm, like, just in a in a drawer. <laughs> like, it was literally <laughs> like... Ikea, right? <laughs> right, it was like my jewelry box with that little, like, turnkey, you know, when you're a little girl and you have a... Yeah, yeah. You know, it just didn't seem like this fortress of protection, <laughs> like the late Raiders of the Lost Ark style. Yeah. You get this old man... Like is that Walk, the, yeah walking that, down yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, With the, the aisles yeah, um, and it's interesting uh, you know I I didn't think of it that way but now you've opened up my mind to a whole slew of things um, in that you know as we see earlier in this episode um, that elaborate staging by the Sixers and pretty much Taylor to a degree pulls the same thing so he's not unlike them mm-hmm. right a, you know right um, so it's, it's starting to be tough to draw the line of good and evil or whatever right. you want to say. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like, it's almost, I feel like obviously Commander Taylor and and Mira aren't like blood relation. Mm-hmm. Gonna say that openly. Um, <laughs> however, I feel like they might have this almost like, and obviously they're a different sex as well, brothers, you know, man, woman. Um, but when you watch movies like, uh, was it one? Uh, not there's so many ones. I know, I know. that one. <laughs> that that one. Down. <laughs> when there's like a br- uh, a sibling rivalry, one kind of breaks off. Okay, that narrows it into thousands of, uh, yes. of more movies. That's the a one whole with the genre. blonde guy that came out kind of recently. The one with the blonde. A the, blonde. He got sent from the Thunder God. Oh, Thor. Thor. Okay. You know, like, and then his brother becomes like the king or whatever of. Mm-hmm. And now he's like cast away. I feel like there's something going on where like Mira and Taylor were close and worked in cahoots or were partners or something. Mm -hmm. And something went awry and they split off. And then Mira became like the dark horse. And then Taylor's like the the god. But but he's also dark. You know what I mean? There's something going on with him. For two things, he, Taylor's always being called the bad man, right? And everyone just kind of brushes it off, I don't, right? I don't yeah, know. no one's like <laughs> concerned. <laughs> like, do you have a murderous <laughs> record that we should know about? Like, no one really. I mean, clearly he does, but like, no one ever really seems to. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, and then the second point I lost. And again, well, who you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, you know, where a lot of people in 2149 are mad at Taylor, mm-hmm. um, and which begs the question: Okay, who, who you know, it's clearly. In some sense, it's not a democracy; it's a dictatorship, right? Um, led by him. So, who appointed him? You know what I mean? And what yeah, choice was did. anyone given? <laughs> I feel like he appointed himself. I mean, we d- we don't have that answer, right? I feel we like don't. they maybe didn't have much of a much of a choice. 
he kind of stepped in and I think yeah. everyone around him was weaker or something and he's like the bully kind. No, but don't you think when they made the trip out to Terra Nova, you know, they kind of picked out those explorers? I mean, um, I mean think of any been, expedition. Yeah. yeah. You, need a, you need, like, he's the Christopher Columbus yeah, or he may whatever. Have had, he may right. have had, you know, the compass or the the expertise or something where he, he just kind of naturally became the leader. I don't know. Well, he's definitely, he's got a leader personality. There's no doubt to that. Whether or not it's good or bad, you know, obviously remains the, the open for interpretation um but i'm curious as to how he pissed off people in the in the it's future yeah. any thoughts on that honestly not no that that was kind of new or that when she said that was a surprise to me and i wasn't expecting that or thinking that and i well, you know um any position of power really begs on uh, kind of you're gonna you're gonna make some people angry because based on your you know you're in a position where you have to make choices and so, you know, um, you're going to make a choice. Some people aren't going to like it. Now, that doesn't mean it's right or wrong, but people aren't going to like it. And so... Uh, Maybe he was like know. the Bush of 2149. But do you, do you get that feeling when you're seeing him run Terra Nova? I mean, it seems, for the most part, uh, to be a happy place. Or is that right. like I, a false it's sense an of... act. I think he's just... You know, trying to please everyone in Terra Nova. But are the Terra Novians really unhappy? Right. They don't seem it, but maybe they didn't. They don't like, did, did they not know him? Was he not that well known in 2149? Because if he was a public figure, then these people would have probably had some bad association with him if he was a hated person in 2149. So he probably wasn't in any huge position where, you know, he can go to, to, to Terra Nova from 2149 and, and not be known mm -hmm. for any past wrongdoings or anything. So. I want to see the back. I want to read these like bios and backstories and things. No, because if, if he was Italian, I'd know why they hated him. Mm -hmm. But he's, you know, just like this generic white guy. Like I don't know what he would have done rather than just be like a dickhead. Well, and it's interesting too. You you figure if he was a known figure in twenty one forty nine, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into and all these things. So, uh, you know, uh, the the fan. I I mean, albeit Jim was was in jail for a few years, so he, you know, he may not be caught up on current events. But you figured uh, the wife would be able to kind of fill him in, you know, based on like, okay, you know, uh, this, uh, this is the commander, blah, blah. And this is what's been said about him. We'll find out if it's true or not. Right. That, is, that does uh, pique my curiosity, what he's done. It, maybe it was something that had to do with Mira's brother. She said her brother is stuck in the call. Right? And, it, and, so and, and, the and call. something with the son we know um, for, uh, for Wait, Taylor. Right, he. From yeah, we still one. have an unresolved I mean, thing about his family. We don't really know exactly what happened I'm to sorry, them. Sorry, I meant Mira's daughter. Is it daughter? So, yeah, she's but yeah, daughter. maybe, she, maybe somehow he pissed everyone off by. You know what? You guys thought the show was simple. This is starting now, to get no, deep. Now it's getting very. It's intricate. like I'm, 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 I'm about to simple. draw a diagram here. Okay, okay. <laughs> right. What do we got? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying with those cans. Like they opened so many cans, and now they're like leaving them open. So there are a lot of unresolved. It's like you yeah, open but, up but the I tuna, think, you just leave the tuna in the can. Like, yeah, but I don't think <laughs> make your tuna salad. But I don't think they're just leaving it. I think I think you know it's slowly tying yeah. together. Yeah. The, the ties are very thin right now, right. but I think it's it's all there. Mm. And obviously, right now it's it's a lot of things left for interpretation, which is the, I guess the fun part for us. But uh, also simultaneously, like, tell me, <laughs> tell me yeah. what it means. Violin over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about the little girl, um, Leah. Um, you know, uh, obviously, I, I thought it was a great character to add to the foil tonight. Um, Who we thought was Liam. At the yeah, beginning. yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, boy. Uh, they, they they still got to get their clarity up. Uh, we're still wondering <laughs> what that sense from last week right, was that we didn't right. know. Never know. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, you know, I thought she played the actress herself was excellent. Yeah, she mm -hmm. did good. Um, the first scene where, where um, we see her, she reminded me of Bam Bam from Flintstones. Oh, you totally. Know, running <laughs> yeah, around yeah, yeah, and things. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That was quite funny. Yeah. Um, she also reminded me of, um, don't do the off topic thing because this is totally on topic. She remind, reminded, reminded me also of um, from the Christmas uh, vacation with Chevy Chase, the cousin, uh, Randy Newman. Oh, is that his name, Randy? The forget. I know, I know. They they have they're like you know from the like trailer trash kind of, and they have mm. a daughter. She looks just and she has no tongue. She yep. can't speak. Identical. In, anyway, enough. yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody Jesse. out there. <laughs> there you go. Well, um, let me. How much of 
what she kind of described about the Sixers was true. Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. No, Newman. Anyway, sorry. I think it's Randy Quaid. Or it's right. something Quaid. Anyway, whatever. Continue. Sorry. Um, the, you know, because she said we move around a lot. Um, you know, there's not enough food. So how much of this do we believe? I believe. I believe that part. I believe that part. Yeah. They seem kind of nomadic, right? They do, and I, I like that kind of uh, juxtaposition. The Terranovians are, are, are rooted people. Right. Yeah. And then the Sixers are the, the nomadic ones. Right. They're rebels, but with a soul, with a cause, mm -hmm. it seems. But do, do you feel like the Sixers have somewhat of a soul? I feel like Mira kind of relates to certain... Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a soul sense from them. Right. Like they're fighting for something deeper that, or like more, uh, more um, dignified than we know. Than we, mm -hmm. we are yeah. expecting. What do you think, Phil? Uh, I mean, I, I'd be interested to see kind of their big case. You know what I mean? Um, right now, uh, they haven't presented neither the Terranovians or anyone else. Uh, we know they kind of broke off, but it's not like they had this big, like, uh, the equivalent of, like, um, a mass assembly and them preaching, like, hey, Terranova is a lie, and here's why, and ta Commander Taylor should be brought down for X, Y, and Z. You know, and so until we get that, it's it's very hard to pinpoint, okay, what's fully going on. Well, so we know Mira lived in Terra Nova. We saw yes. her house. What do you think caused the split? I don't know. Uh, again, I, 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 I just think, you know, as, as Jim obviously put it to Commander Taylor, uh, she doesn't like you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the daughter. It, you know, what else would mm -hmm. get, get her so emotionally charged? And I want what I would like to know about her and her daughter is why did she come to Terranova without her daughter to begin with? That's where um, I think Taylor comes in. I yeah. think so. And I think um, Taylor has a lot of pride. We see this episode, you know, uh, Taylor didn't believe the little girl once she made a fool of him, you know? And uh, so so I think he's, he's very much, okay, one and done. You fool me once shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me kind of guy. Right. And so he's not having any of it. And I think there might have been some sort of situation. There has to be, in my opinion. I don't know. Uh, any last thoughts about that or anything else before we move on to a commercial and then come back with our special segment with the DL Dinosaur mm -hmm. of the Week and uh, our news and gossip? Well, um, my last uh, comment has nothing to do with the show. Um, I want everyone to go to my blog called Sweat the Small Stuff with Kristen.com. It's very underappreciated. It's a good blog. I haven't been posting much lately because I feel underappreciated. But right. today I posted. You guys go check it out. Sweat the small stuff with Kristen.com. All right. You got it. Kendra? I mean, you can check me out um, on my website. Is, the, is this the time for? Well, we'll do it at the end. But real quick, <laughs> well, I, I know give the we're website. supposed to do it at the beginning. We didn't do it at the beginning. We do it at the end. Oh, oh. I'll, I'll, well, I'll save it's mine. All right, fair enough. Suspense. Oh, no worries. All right, Jesse, <laughs> take us to a commercial and we'll I'll come back. I'll do it again at the end. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This yeah. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424 256 1729. 424 Six television, and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespearean. Like you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy, Nucky is a villain. 424 256 1729. 424 256 1729. I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband? Or your best friend. <laughs> the wig! The wig will come that wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. Welcome back, guys. Um, so, yes. That's the raptor. That is another raptor. <laughs> That's what we're kind of missing. We're missing the dinosaur aspect of this. And so I'm really hoping uh, we get some more. Um, but to give us a little more dinosaur... Insight is Kristen with this week's DL Dino of the Week. Ladies and gents, this dinosaur is on such a download that I don't even have any information for it. Just kidding, I have a few things. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't even, again, like last week with um, with Gabrielle and the uh, dinosaur that she, or no, with the dinosaur yeah. you had, yeah. we couldn't pronoun oh. pronounce it. Um, yeah. Here we are. It's we are seeing the picture. The short, the short, like, like a uh, nickname or whatever, I don't know, I'm doing this, um, is <laughs> G-Hammer. It's like 
Interesting. It's like gynecologist hammer or something. It's like something ridiculously long. If you guys could, if we threw it up on the screen, you would be able to sound it out better than I would. Um, but this little guy, he is actually not that little. I shouldn't say he's little. Um, he is between uh, four and six tons. He's one of the oldest dinosaurs. Um, oh, wow. They date him back to 190 million years ago. Okay. Um, pretty cool. He was found in Antarctica. Nice. That's kind of cool. Like, cause you always hear dinosaurs, like you know, like North America, mm-hmm. Africa. The you know, you don't really hear Antarctica, and so that says a lot about the mm-hmm. the the temperature change. Yeah. In Antarctica, cause nothing can survive there now, really. You know. And plus the theory of Pangaea and like right. you know how it right. split off right. and things like that. Right. So he's proving our our theory with that. Um, they ended up finding. And is he a herbivore? He is, is an it? herbivore. Okay. Yep, he's a plant eater. Um, but he does stand between um, 20, or he is, uh, not stand, he's 20 to 25 feet long. I don't know how tall he is. On his hind legs. Well, yeah, he's, uh, I would say at least a good 10 feet. But he if looks. If you have to do it proportionally. Yeah, he doesn't look. Here we go. Here's the spelling. Glac- uh, glacial. Yeah. Glacial. Glacial Actually, it's uh-huh. not as hard as I was making it out to be. <laughs> so I, I guess they gave it the the glacier part since they found yeah. it in Antarctica. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, that makes sense. Is that the only one found there? No, well, they, um, from what I read, they actually go off a lot of just finding the heel bones and, like, the foot bones. Mm-hmm. They have, obviously, his structure, but they haven't found a lot of bones beyond the foot area. Yeah. Which I don't know why. That's kind of bizarre. Um, but uh, he's a sauropod. Are and what does that mean? That? I don't know. Okay, so he's a sauropod. Sor- sauropod. And uh, they ended up finding fossils from him not until 90 or 91. Mm-hmm. And then in 2007 is um, when more research was uh, was out about this guy. All right. Anything else to add? Uh no. All right. Well, glacial, glaciosaurus hammery, hammery, hammery. Yes, there you go. You are the DL Dino of the week. And with that, why don't we go to our news and gossip with Kendra? Uh, After Buzz yeah. TV News. Love that. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we have the clip ready, Jesse. Um, if we do, I'll get into the first news bit. Um, executive producers Brannon Braga and Renee Echeverria. Is that how I say it? I don't know. Don't look at me. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you heard me butcher I? that dinosaur's name. <laughs> the last you. person you want to ask. Um, the Shannon family may not be the only new kids on the block for very long. This is news from last week. Um, if we can take a look at what they had said about uh, the 11th pilgrimage to Terra Nova. All right. We're trying to get it up. Here we go. We're getting it up. Did you guys pass? There's, there's, we won't say when or how, but there's an 11th pilgrimage. And maybe other strange goings on. There's more than meets the eye than to tell you. We don't want to give anything away, but the 10th pil- pilgrimage will not be the last. It's part, part of the DNA of the show is that there are, are ongoing right people coming every few months. So that's, you know, that'll give us a chance to bring new characters and new situations and new, new problems and new opportunities. So, and new faces. Spoiler alert. First season last in terms of months on <laughs> in Terra It's pretty much real time. Okay. You know, it's a 13 episode, so it's about 13 weeks. Yeah, we wanted to, we wanted it to, you know, this is new. You know, told through the Shannon family's eyes. We didn't want to do a time cut six months later. They might, you know, get a little too comfortable, so we wanted to keep keep it more or less week to week for the for the viewers, week to week for them. Yeah, six months from now, they could be more adjusted to you know having dinosaurs eat out of their hands. Basically. That's right. <laughs> exactly. All right. That, well, was, that was fun. That's, that's that was interesting. Fun. I w- it's funny. I didn't even think about another pilgr- pilgrimage coming. That uh. just didn't even seem to occur to me that that could even happen. But yeah. I mean, we always knew it was a possibility. I mean, that how how would uh you know Josh's girlfriend come out there through another pilgrimage? I thought they were just gonna sneak her alone through her own little hole. <laughs> <laughs> just zap her through. Ding. <laughs> and then she's like, oh. I'm here. Well, that was courtesy of uh, give me my remote. So um, other than that, Terra Nova will not get a full season. Fox executives have confirmed 
uh, that it will complete its 13-hour run in December. Uh, and the question is whether the drama will get a second year for next fall. So wait, they're wait, they're, uh, they're cutting yeah. the episodes, or like was well, twenty two supposed to be made and then cutting it, or what's the deal? Well, thir- yeah, because thirteen is not a full run, so they're gonna. End it is for a cable network. Is it? But yeah, cable does and uh, either does ten. Some do Whoa. six. You know, if it's like the first season, yeah. Then ten, twelve, and thirteen is usually the norm. There were more, but they're. I mean, they're saying it's in question whether there's gonna be a second. Oh no! Don't do this to me. After what are you we've doing? Deciphered everything about uh, it. We're <laughs> starting to love it. <laughs> That's according to Entertainment Weekly, so you can well, look that up if you. Entertainment Weekly, you're not entertaining me. Entertainment like, Schmeekly. <laughs> uh, and then uh, what's the last one? Last but not least, um, our friends across the pond, uh, Canal Plus. It's a, a channel in France is uh, set to air Terra Nova. They're going to add it to their 2012 lineup. You know, it's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm surprised it, it's taken that long because uh, the, the strangest thing happened. We got uh, we do Desperate Housewives, um, and w- uh, apparently someone in Germany is able to see the shows literally that day that we do. And because they, they wrote back to us and they were like, you know, they fact-checked us and things like that. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it was a very nice email, but it was someone from Germany. And wow. So it's interesting uh, how, like, it's... Is it, like, Hulu-based or something? Yeah, or maybe something online? internet? No, I don't they, know. The, the, these fans for these specific type of shows, uh, I know this through Vampire Diaries, they can get it through, like, the weirdest sites, and they ha- but the thing is they have to wake up whatever time it is their time to watch oh. it live, but it's the East Coast feed. Oh, wow. So they can... Wow. There, there are pirate sites out there that wow. can get the East Coast feed okay. of... All right, so we don't promote that. Right, (laughs) shady (laughs) sites. Well, yeah, because it wouldn't be Hulu, because I know even in... Yeah, so we don't promote (laughs) that. (laughs) But, uh, you know, I wish there was some sort of way um, to get a pull for Terranova, you know, get some support. I do like it. Uh, Do we know anything uh, more about the the viewership? Are uh, the numbers staying... The same. Here's here's here was, was the tough part last week was the baseball game or whatever had happened. Um, you know, uh, in the ratings initially when they came out on Wednesday, there was like five or th- three or five million viewers, yeah, and three. it was because it needs to be adjusted for that and and through the adjustment. The, but they've been getting around eight million. I mean, they are aren't they competing with Monday Night Football? That's like a pretty tough. No, well, I think th- I, they must be. I. Yeah, I mean, it's it, well, it, you've also got so many other things. Uh, other so shows. I don't know. I don't know what the factors are, but um, I guess I don't know. I, I'm I am kind of half disappointed because Fox did say, you know what, we will stick with this show, you know, and they were gonna take a chance on yeah. it. So I don't know. But anyways, that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. For that this. is your AfterBuzz TV <laughs> news and gossip yes. for the week of October seventeenth, two thousand eleven. Um, and one more thing, uh, Commander Taylor was on the Today Show today. Oh, was he? Yeah. What did he say? I didn't see it. Okay. I so. just heard the preview. <laughs> they were like, Commander Taylor from Terranova. And then I shut my door and I was like, mm-hmm. I'm out. <laughs> I had to go. I had to be. They were exterminating in my apartment. So. All right. Well, next week, you got to tell us what, what he said. Okay. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. All right. So we don't get, an- again, as we said, we don't get another episode until next week. Um, where's my notes? Two weeks from now, right? That's, that's what I meant. I don't know what I said. I got you. All right. There you go. (laughs) Glad I have co-hosts. And uh, the big thing was uh, we don't keep secrets in the Shannon family. Jim said that to, it seemed like Josh, maybe the whole family. So uh, could we see a splintering of the family? What's going on? I think they're building for a splintering of the family. The the comment that Josh made in this episode was actually pretty funny Mm -hmm. about how he's very resentful of his family, very, you know, clearly, but... Not until this episode, I think we didn't realize that he was um, resentful toward his sister mm-hmm. because he said, is Miss Perfect not being perfect enough or something? You know, can, is yeah. she not doing open heart surgery, but, you know, and doing a, like, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he's, I think he's, I think he may stray. I think he may be recruited maybe by the Sixers. Um, you know, he's got a lot of muscle development to do, to go through. Mm-hmm. Once he becomes a man, um, maybe he'll be against his father. In some sort of like war, most most guys are hateful of their fathers. Uh, I don't know I, why. I don't know, think so. I don't, I don't think yeah. so. No, ask most guys. They are, and 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 the ones that are, you can kind of go, 
okay, that explains a lot. Yeah. You know, and 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 it's almost self defeating in some sense. Um, I've I've literally seen it where people, you know, the the father is very very successful, and the son would be so bitter that okay, what do you do for a living? Oh, sorry, you're I mean, a bum. Wait, most though. I would say most. The, the statistics? I don't know. I'll get you the statistics. How about as that? I, but as, I as you, promised, when you have an average father, there can't be any like bl- bad blood because there. You know, my dad. I mean, my dad's great, but he's not like some high achiever or something. You know what I mean? You're also a girl. I love so you, dad. I'm just gonna. That's take true. Uh, but now is the time to do your plugs, ladies. Um, Oh, so. if you guys didn't hear, uh, <laughs> go to sweat the small stuff with Kristen.com. If you like minutia of everyday life and it drives you crazy and it sometimes drives you to want to commit suicide. No, I'm just kidding. But if it really bothers you, it's a very funny blog about the daily ins and outs of life that get really annoying. Yeah. And uh, so go check it out. Might be offensive, might not be. Hopefully it is. And uh, send it to your friends. And what is it? Sweat the small stuff with Kristen dot com. And uh, Kendro, wh- what do we got Kristen? going? on? K R I S T E N. And a lot of people nowadays don't know how to spell sweat. Smell, spell. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> spell sweat. It's S W E A T, and it's not S W E E T for you high schoolers out there. There you go. And Kendra, what um, can we? What I, are we looking forward to? I basically have a one-stop shop out on my website, which is Kendra Cabasel. And how do you spell that? It's K E N D R A K A B A S E L E dot com. Okay. That's for you too. <laughs> that is. I'm going to test you <laughs> next week. I can spell it, I just can't say it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I should pronounce it on my website. You should. Is or the dinosaur name of the, oh, of the team. Oh, stop. No. Fair enough. And uh, again, missing this week is Gabrielle Loren, but check out her stuff. Uh, and uh, check on out Facebook. these lovely ladies. She wants people on her Facebook on page. On Facebook? Okay, and you guys have Twitters. Um, yeah. Is it your just just your names? Yep, at yep. Kristen Carney, K R I S T E N C A R N, as a Nancy E Y. So Jones. for those of you on video, uh, you can see the spellings um, in the credits, and for those of you on audio, just check out the description. The name's right there, and put it into Twitter. Boom, you're done. <laughs> Booyah! And uh, for me, I have nothing to promote. It's all after buzz. Come on. <laughs> anyway, Jess, take us out of here. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz Buzz you later, dinos. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.